morning. <laughs> Another Sunday together. <laughs> nice to see you all. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna start. You yeah. <clears throat> got some things to share. And yeah, we wanted to start. I uh, well, I wanted to start sharing like how this topic came about for for us this week. You want to share the topic? Yes, the topic for this week is surrendering, handing it over to the Holy Spirit, and then praying for guidance and just being amazed at all the miracles that happen. And how this topic came about for me this week was because I was, like, during all my teen years and all my life, I had been really struggling with Face, facial problems, like a lot of pimples and things like that, and it has always brought a lot of uh, shame, really, a lot, a lot of shame, and wanting to hide, and a lot of self-hatred, and many, many dark feelings for me, and this time it was coming something different, like I had one that was like getting worse and worse and I didn't know what to do and it had just brought me to this place where I was just like so ashamed of even sharing about it. Like li literally I was like shaking like I can just keep this to myself, I, I just have to deal with with this myself. I don't need to share about this. Like. You are not the body and all these different things that coming to trying to tell you, yeah, you don't need to express about that. But it was really bothering me and really bringing a lot of self-hatred and shame, deep, deep shame. And so, yeah, like finally I decided, okay, this is something that I need to open up with, with the group and I needed to share it and I needed to lift it up. Well, you started with sharing with me first, though, didn't you? Yeah. That's yeah, began. first uh, yeah. Uh, it started, then finally being <laughs> able to share at least with one person with him. And then I could see that it didn't feel complete, like it was still like, okay, I can share with him, it's like our secret or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, like it really needed to um, be released, like really stop trying to do it myself. And yeah, so I went down to the expression session that we have each lunch and I just started sharing how this made me feel and all the shame and at this point it came to my mind, why are you trying to deal with this yourself? Why are you not handing this over to Jesus to help you, to the Holy Spirit? Why are you trying to fix this yourself? It has never worked before. But it was like, oh my God, like a huge in my mind because I have never ever thought about handing this over to the Holy Spirit. It was like my secret thing. I have to deal with it. I'll do whatever I can and things like that. But it never occurred to me that I could actually hand this over. And. I can see that I've been discovering many, many things like that right now, like many things that I haven't handed over and that I'm trying to deal with it myself or trying to fix it or trying to make it better. <laughs> and obviously it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so, yeah, like when that happened, I, it, I was like, oh, my God, I haven't, I, have, I haven't even thought about that. This has always been one thing that I just kept for myself. And when I did it, like, okay, I was ready. I'm ready to really hand this over. Oh, I just felt a huge release. Like, wow, I don't need to do this myself any longer. I can actually pray for guidance now. How would you like this to be addressed? How would you like this to to be done like this is bringing a lot of things for me so like I'm just open to your guidance and open to the things you want to share with me and just with that prayer I could see that a huge relief came and and with the help of mighty companions Kristen was with me and 
it was she was sharing uh, also with me, and it was just really helpful. And like after that, it just came a moment when I was ready to f like face it again. Like I went to the mirror and started looking. Okay, what what's with this thing? And uh, suddenly, just the things that were trapped there just came out, and it was like the healing had started like that but for me it was it wasn't even about that I could see it was a huge lesson that was just a tiny thing a tiny symbol to show me this huge lesson that first it doesn't need to be painful I do you have to hand it over to the Holy Spirit it doesn't need to be painful it can be easy it can be joyful it can be in a relaxed way, and wow, I'm just so grateful because that was the lesson that I needed to learn with this whole thing, that it is just about handing it over, and really, I don't know how the healing happens, but it just starts happening, <laughs> it just happens, and then suddenly all the gifts start to show up. So yeah, this was one one thing that I really wanted to share with you and just really reaffirm the miracles in my heart and in my mind and and I know Ken you have you have things that you would mm. like to share that were happening to you mm. this week. Mm. Yeah, and just what you were saying that that yeah. other that other point that you brought in like you didn't want to see that there was a sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. And then realizing that like by hiding this like that was like wow what what else am i hiding why yeah. why why would i hide this um from the holy spirit why why on earth was i keeping hold of this to myself exactly was it was the pain but once you just opened up through fear of the shame and the the, the guilt once you opened up then all the support started to come in yeah it was like a yes a yes in my heart like yes i want your help yes please help me yeah but it had never crossed your mind no, to ask for help. No, that's why I was so excited to share yeah. this with you because it never crossed my <laughs> mind before. It's amazing how many, many things never ever crossed my mind. Even clothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just wild. We just need so much help. Yeah, he says, um, if only you knew how much help you needed, you would ask for it. And we don't realize how much help we actually need. Yeah. And that we don't need to suffer. Yeah. Show me there's no sacrifice in giving this over to you. And yeah. <sighs> that just feels so wonderful. <laughs> and in actual fact, it was um, similar for me um, this week. Um, now I can see that. Um, could see that there was a lot of shame and guilt coming up for me. Um, had a lot of new things um, coming in and new projects that I didn't actually feel comfortable with and I wasn't able to express it. Um, and it was things that were, to me, would be like technical. So, for instance, we're, we're building a bot at the moment and I'm... I know nothing about building parts or <laughs> anything really that technical. And so I was trying, but everything seemed to be going wrong. And it was like I was trying to solve the problem, but that wasn't actually what the problem was. Mm. The problem was is I didn't feel good enough. I felt a lot of shame and I felt a lot of guilt. And I was trying to um, hold on to it in a way trying to find my way out without asking for support and didn't even know that there was support. So I can see there's this pattern, there's always this great difficulty in asking for support that I should be able, should be able to do things. And then I get angry and so the anger then just masks over the top of everything. I'm just annoyed and I felt like I was trying to just hold things together um, and there were a couple of other things, for instance, like I had to write some proposals, but um, I'm not really that good at writing either. So it was like, I, 
it was like bringing up some sort of like past stuff mm. that was like hitting me as well. And so always my defense is to get angry and believe that there's too much pressure being put on, on me. And seemingly <laughs> that, that you could say, okay, yeah, he's he's got he's got a lot on. It makes it, it it sort of like made a lot of sense. So I was kind of justifying in my mind, but really that wasn't how I was feeling inside. And I was trying desperately to push away these deeper feelings. And of course, then there's like pride of not wanting to be exposed mm. that that I need that I need help. This has been given, so why can't I do it? Um, letting everyone down, um, you're the weak link, all kinds of different things like coming in um, to my mind. But they're so in the background because it's masked by the anger. Mm. And so what I was feeling was, as long as I can keep in control of all the things that I know that I can do, um, then hopefully the things that I, I'm not in control of will eventually sort of like pop through. But of course, more and more tasks were coming in so it's like I'm now just on the sinking ship really because <laughs> I'm not expressing what's going on and I didn't even know that I needed that support in a way it's kind of similar to you I just didn't know that I needed that and then similar to you I just um, it got to the point where I really needed help so I went to the Course in Miracles and I um, put my hand on the book and I'm just like, I really need help. So I, I flipped the book over and he's given me this lesson before. So it was really funny. I was like, OK, this really mm -hmm. saved me before, actually. It was really beautiful. It was a time when I'd just I'd been doing the Course in Miracles for about six months. And it felt like my life had gone downhill rather than uphill. <laughs> like just so much going on. I thought, God, this course is a nightmare. I'm just having all of this shit coming up all of the time. I feel really terrible. And I almost gave up on it. And I, same again, I put my hand on the book. And the lesson he gave me was, only God's plan for salvation will work. Um, and so this was my saving lesson again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, the rescue. it was the rescue mission from Jesus to <laughs> like, uh, do, don't forget that lesson. <laughs> Remember two years ago? Mm. And I was like, and it was just like, you know, that, that, that remembering of that, like, oh, OK, he's there again. And so there's a particular part in this section where he talks about the ego, which I'd like to share with you all. And that's Lesson 71. And he says, the ego's plan for salvation centres around holding grievances. It maintains that if someone else spoke or acted differently... If, someone exter if some external circumstance or events were changed, you would be saved. Thus the source of salvation is constantly perceived as outside yourself. Each grievance you hold is a declaration, an assertion, in which you believe that says, if this were different, I would be saved. The change of mind necessary for salvation is thus demanded of everyone and everything except yourself. Mm. And so I read that and I was like, thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> and it was like, I, I, was, I was lucky that I had, I had an opportunity to join with Kristen and it was just like this complete fog had like was in my mind. And now there's this situation that's not as big as I think it is, but it's just like I can't even I can't even think straight. I am the victim of the world I see. Um, this is all happening to me. It's all out of my hands. This is not fair. Whatever. <laughs> and it's just like I can't even see I can't even see my way out of mm. it. And similar to you, just ask for help. Mm. It's very, very simple. Yeah, hand it over. Hand it over. But of course, I couldn't see that I'd been holding on to this shame. But once I, once I read this, it was like just the boom, the light bulb came on and was like, you're holding on to the shame and the guilt that you're not good enough. And it was like, OK, right, great. So knock on Kristen's door. Yeah. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Come in. Yeah, OK. <laughs> this is what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like really like beautiful because obviously we're looking at the project like 
what's going on? Like, I don't understand yeah. why this is not flowing. I'm like, believe you, I'm trying my best. Uh, all of this. And, and then it was like, no, it wasn't about that at all. Mm. It was about really, really expressing and being vulnerable. And that's always the practice is to be vulnerable, which can be very hard. And I'm very stubborn at being vulnerable, I have to admit. But it was like, no. And so came back again and just wanted to share all of this. And it just felt, it felt so much lighter. Mm. It was just a relief. That's all I had to do. I, I only had to share. <laughs> But I, obviously, you've got to find out what the problem is first. Yeah. But once I shared, I felt, I felt that relief and then felt like closer to Kristen. And so it was like, oh, thank God. And I was getting into some emotion. I was like, I really want to cry. <laughs> she went, do you want a hug? And I, okay, so I went over, had a hug and some, some tears come. And it felt like a bit of a release was coming through. Mm. Um, and it's been really interesting, like all of a sudden, like my mind's become lighter. But it was interesting what my mind did yesterday mm. afterwards, which was very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I had this clearing. And one of the things that I shared with Kristen was, do you know what? I felt under all this pressure, but thank God I didn't feel anxious because I always seem to suffer with anxiety and that I do not like. And then the next day, I'd somehow healed something. And so it was like, ha, 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 I'm going to play the anxiety card on you. And then I could see this annoyance starting to come up. Mm. And normally then the anger masks everything. And then I'm back into the, well, I'm having too much pressure put on me. That's the reason why I'm anxious. Now that's the reason why I'm angry. But I could see it like, and it was just like coming up, coming up. And it's like, wow, God, now, now, now this is like the next phase. But it was like good that I could kind of see it like, this is just a defense against the truth. I'm just trying to grasp onto these old ways and I'm not wanting um, to express what's, go what's going on really. Exactly. So it was so helpful, just like the ego's like, I'm gonna get you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not having this. You know, and what you were saying reminds me of this beautiful quote that we found out and I just really feel like this is like exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it is from chapter 13. The section is the fear of redemption. And it says, do not hide suffering from his sight, but bring it gladly to him. Lay before his eternal sanity all your hurt and let him heal you. Do not leave any spot of pain hidden from his light and search your mind carefully for any thoughts you may feel you may fear to uncover. For he, he will heal every little thought you have kept to hurt you and cleanse it of its littleness, restoring it to the magnitude of God. <laughs> Yeah, that's just so wonderful. Yeah, it was amazing that you picked out that bit and I thought, wow, that was just so perfect. So perfect, yeah. Just don't hide it, yeah. give it over. Oh. <sighs> so that's also part of our invitation for everyone today, just yeah. to be looking at if there's anything you're hiding. Yeah, something that you might say, well, I have to deal with this even, ah, uh, yeah, they tell me I, I must suffer from pain of my back every, every week and mm -hmm. that's just the way it is and I'm just used to it. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't need to be that way. There's something deeper. So yeah, like I just want to be together with you on this and mm -hmm. with all of you guys and if there's anything that you feel like you have been trying to deal with yourself and it hasn't worked. Like we would like to invite you to just... Yeah. Yeah. Hand it over. Hand it over, recognize it. And we have a beautiful meditation right now prepared for you that will help you. And, and even the prayer can be, show me something that I'm not seeing in myself. Yeah. Maybe it's it's hidden in you right now. Um, and so that can be also be part of the prayer. 
I'm, I'm not sure what's down there, but can you show me something, Holy Spirit, that's blocking me from being my true self? Mm. Yeah, it will always be very gentle and loving. Yeah. Would you like to start with this? You want me to start? Yes, yeah. yeah, sure. I'm going to read a section each. A paragraph each? Paragraph each, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So just right now, we just invite you, if you feel comfortable, just to close your eyes. Just relax into yourselves. And we're going to read the section, The Decision for Guiltlessness, Chapter 14. Say to the Holy Spirit only, decide for me, and it is done. For his decisions are reflections of what God knows about you. And in this light, error of any kind becomes impossible. Why would you struggle so frantically? to anticipate all you cannot know, when all knowledge lies behind every decision the Holy Spirit makes for you. Learn of his wisdom and his love and teach his answer to everyone who struggles in the dark. For you decide for them and for yourself. How gracious it is to decide all things through him whose equal love is given equally to all alike. He leaves you no one outside you and so he gives you what is yours because your father will have you share it with him. In everything be led by him and do not reconsider. Trust him to answer quickly, surely, and with love for everyone who will be touched in any way by this decision. And everyone will be. Would you take unto yourself the sole responsibility for deciding what can bring only good to everyone? Would you know this? You told yourself the most unnatural habit of not communicating with your Creator. Yet you remain in close communication with Him and with everything that is with Him within Him and it is within yourself. Unlearn isolation through his loving guidance and learn of all the happy communication that you have thrown away but could not lose. Whenever you are in doubt what you should do, think of his presence in you and tell yourself this and only this. He leadeth me and knows the way, which I know not. Yet he will never keep me from what he will have me learn. And so I trust him to communicate to me all that he knows for me. Then let him teach you quietly how to perceive your guiltlessness, which is already there.
Pardon? We have a couple of minutes. Is that all we have left? How, yes. how long do we have? Two minutes. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, like in this handing over, we will like to finish with this. Like, I could see peace instead of this. Peace of mind is clearly an, inter an internal matter. It must begin with your own thoughts and then extend outward. It is from your peace of mind that a peaceful perception of the world arises. Mm. Search your mind for fear thoughts, anxiety provoking situations, offending personality or events or anything else about which you are harboring unloving thoughts. Note them all casually, repeating the idea for today slowly as you watch them arise in your mind and let each one go to be replaced by the next. I could see peace instead of this. I could see peace instead of this. I could see peace instead of this. So we wish everyone today peace. Yeah. Peace of mind. Release. Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that time went to. It was so quick today. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah. And sharing this experience, experience with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely to see you all. Yeah. Peace be with you. Love you. Bye-bye.